Master of Education in Distance Education, by Distance Education, by Tom Worthington, The Higher Education Whisperer.com. A recent item in the journal Nature, Sharples, 2016, listed Athabasca University in Canada as one of four institutions worldwide pioneering global open education. A few weeks ago I completed a Master of Education in Distance Education at the Athabasca University Center for Distance Education. I selected Athabasca because they have more than two decades of experience specializing in using e-learning to teach how to do global online education. Now I intend to use what I have learned to help move Australian higher education online by the end of the decade. Being an international de student. The Athabasca University program took just over three years, part-time, entirely online. Mostly I completed one course per term, three terms per year. For two terms I did two courses at a time, but this was very hard work and not a practice I would recommend. During my studies I created 2,291 files totaling 458 megabytes on my laptop computer. One for the program and one for each course, with about 100 postings in each, 1,200 postings in total, made up of about 100,000 words. Keeping a private journal was a good way to keep notes for use in contributions to course forums, which are assessed, and for my e-portfolio, discussed later. While Athabasca University recommends the Microsoft Office suite, I found the free open source LibreOffice was an adequate substitute. One paid application I found useful was the Grammarly Grammar Checker. Athabasca University also provided access to Moodle, where most course notes were provided, text-based interactions took place and assignments were submitted. Access to Mahara was provided for preparing an e-portfolio, I also used Mahara for my private journals. Adobe Connect was provided for synchronous, real-time, audio, webinars, and for presentation of the Capstone ePortfolio. Moodle, Mahara and Connect were adequate. My wireless modem running, at times, at 256 kilobits per second, was adequate to undertake the course. Capstone ePortfolio. In place of a conventional master's thesis, I completed a Capstone ePortfolio using Mahara. This presents five artifacts, covering six competency areas, as specified by Hoven, 2015. Conclusion In a webinar at the end of the program I presented my e-portfolio and then spent 30 minutes answering questions. This was a nerve-wracking process, much as it would have been in a face-to-face -face session. Working with students and instructors online. For just over three years I worked online with Athabasca students, mostly in Canada, but also in Europe and Asia. I was the only Australian in my student cohort and at times it felt a little lonely. However, I had the pleasure of meeting two of my professors face to face, when they were a key part of international education conferences. Rory McGreal was a keynote speaker at International Conference on Open and Flexible Education 2015 in Hong Kong. Agnieszka Palalas is president of the International Association for Mobile Learning, which ran mLearn 2016 in Sydney. Courses. The program requires all students to complete five core courses from MDDE 601 to 605, then electives or research thesis courses. I chose electives about open, mobile and international education, as well as program evaluation and ending with the required e-portfolio capstone, in place of a dissertation. Dot, dot, dot. Coursework. Unlike Australia Masters programs, which segregate coursework and research students, all Athabasca University students first enroll in a common program, undertake core courses and only then choose a thesis research or e-portfolio coursework. I started with the intention to do quantitative research. However, after completing the core courses, I decided on project-based coursework, as discussed in my e-portfolio. During my studies, the program changed to incorporate a larger capstone electronic portfolio. This changed from being something tacked on the end of the program, to a semester-long course in itself. 
As one of the students during the transition, I had the choice of either option. Fortunately I chose the full course option, as preparing an e-portfolio proved to be surprisingly difficult. Athabasca University is still refining this process, and more scaffolding, treating the e-portfolio as a series of assignments, I suggest would help. Results. One of the most useful aspects of Athabasca University was studying while also working in the field. Like my fellow students I am an experienced teacher and could not only bring that experience to the courses, but also immediately apply what I was learning. As part of the program, I updated my ICT sustainability course, designed an online innovation course. Also I produced two conference papers on e-learning for Asia and a new e-learning paradigm. Part of studying in this way is the increased confidence which comes from learning by doing. I have been able to help students preparing their e-portfolios for the Australian National University Tech Launcher program, as not only had I learned the education theory, but also prepared an e-portfolio in practice. My intention is to continue to put what I have learned into practice, helping Australian universities move their education online, using group work, peer assessment, and e-portfolios. Reskilling academics for e-learning. Most higher education in Australia will, I suggest, be provided via some form of e-learning by the late 2010s. This is not suggest that classrooms and campuses are obsolete, but that most students will study by blended learning, with the blend about 80% online and 20% in a classroom. The difficult part of this transition will not be technology, Australia and New Zealand are world leaders with the Moodle Learning Management System and Mahara ePortfolio package, both available free. The problem is to educate tens of thousands of academics in effective teaching techniques and to convince more senior academics that this is a valid form of education. I hope to be able to assist with this by having teaching recognized as a specialization for computer professionals so we can then lead the e-learning revolution. P.S. Suggestions for improving the program. The Athabasca University courses were very similar in format to the online courses I had taken at the University of Southern Queensland and run for the Australian Computer Society and the Australian National University. To this Athabasca University added the capstone e-portfolio. This format works well for students who are mature, motivated career professionals. I suggest the Athabasca University program could be improved by four terms a year. Doing more than one course at a time greatly increases the difficulty of study. To increase the rate of completion, I suggest four terms a year. Having a long summer holiday makes little sense for working part-time students around the world. Quizzes, learning management systems have provision for automated quizzes. These are useful to help the student learn the basics. A quiz each week for a small number of marks, 1%, helps keep students studying. Peer assessed forums, having a small amount of marks, 10%, for student contributions to forums is useful. However, this is a burden for instructors to mark. I suggest having peer assessment using the inbuilt LMS feature for this. Allow instructors to update materials, minor corrections will need to be made to course materials during a course, particularly correcting broken hypertext links. Instructors should be given access to the LMS to make these changes without having to refer them to administrative staff. Use ePortfolio in all courses, an ePortfolio is a powerful learning technique, but one which is very difficult to master. I suggest having the students start on ePortfolios in the introductory course, including the practice of peer review. This then could be used in all courses. Address MOOCs, the syllabus concerns conventional online distance education courses. There needs to be some mention of other formats, particularly MOOCs. Instructional designers need to learn how to face the question of, why do we need you to design and run a course when we can get a MOOC for free? Introduce assessment, what is an average grade needs to be explained to students. This is so students, particularly international students, can have reasonable expectations. 
Scale fees, Athabasca's fees for international students are less than an Australian student pays for a domestic Australian program. Increasing the fees, where a student can afford to pay, would allow the university to pay for more instructor time and also help ensure the financial viability of the institution. Athabasca already has a form of fees for different regions, with students from Greece and Eastern Europe paying a lower rate for the course through the Eastern Macedonia and Thrace Institute of Technology. For references see Master of Education in Distance Education by Distance Education by Tom Worthington at the Higher Education Whisperer.com.